Hello and welcome to the African Utility Week studio. I'm Ashley Turon, content editor of ESI Africa. Joining us this morning, we have Diego Rodriguez, senior economist of the Global Water Practice at the World Bank Group. Thank you for joining us, Diego. Thanks, Ashley, for having me here. How is your, how's your week been so far? It's been great. We've, we've, I've been uh, quite involved in the water sessions but also we had the chance to present a lot of our water work in a couple of energy sessions. And uh, I think that's a, a great advancement that you are seeing in the region where a lot of the, both sectors being energy and water are quite interested in learning from each other. Have you been getting a, a good response from these sessions? Yes, yeah, very full sessions, lots of questions, lots of interest also to see how we can uh, learn from each other, from understanding how for example, energy uses water and water uses energy, but how, how we can move and advance a bit the, the planning frameworks, investment decisions, joint investment decisions. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's nice to see you know, a, lo a lot of more appetite uh, for, for understanding each other's sectors and collaboration in the future, hopefully. So Diego, I wanted to ask you about the, the World Bank's Thirsty Energy Initiative. Can you explain a bit uh, what this is and how it's being implemented um, in Africa? Sure, so Thirsty Energy is an initiative that we started um, like three or four years ago, uh, precisely to help the countries to understand the, the trade-offs that exist uh, between water and energy. So energy uses a lot of uh, uh, water, actually 90% of the global energy uh, requires some sort of, uh, some form of water. So it's water that is not only needed, for example, for hydropower production, but also fossil fuels, renewables, they need and they use a lot of water uh, for cooling purposes. And also uh, you have extractives such as, such as oil and hydraulic uh, shale gas, etc., that also use uh, water for the extraction processes, transportation, the, the processing also require vast amount of water. At the same time, uh, in the water sector, we also needed to understand the, the complexities of the energy sector, not only in hydropower, uh, in order to be able to understand what the, are the trade-offs across the, the two sectors, how to incorporate that in, in energy planning and in, in water planning, but also understanding that uh, there is competition for water uh, in, others, in other uh, areas. So agriculture requires vast amount of water, it's the largest user in the world. But also you see, like for example, in Africa is the largest, uh, is the most urban, urbanizing continent. So cities are growing very fast and that requires a, a vast amount of water as well. So we need to understand when we look at the energy requirements uh, in terms of water, we need to understand that there is also competition and these trade-offs need to be properly assessed. So we, we saw that there is increasing demand for countries for this type of assessments. Uh, so we started this initiative a few years back and actually we selected uh, South Africa as our first uh, case study. We are now in the process of finalizing that, uh, that assessment. We are actually working with uh, the University of Cape Town, the Energy Research Center. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So you, you have discussed briefly how um, both the, the water and the energy sector depend on each other. But this dependency, what challenges can we see from this in the future? There are, there are many challenges. If you look at the, at the issue of um, the water use in energy, for example, that's one part of the equation. There's also the energy use in the water sector no? that is also required. Uh, what you're seeing is also that um, energy planning, for example, is done at the, at the national level while uh, water planning, we do it at the basin level. So it's a, it's a much more regional approach, much more regional focus. Uh, if you look at the case, for example, of South Africa, you look at the energy planning framework that is being used and you say, well, we plan for certain technologies and, and the future expansion of, uh, of the energy sector in, in a way that nationally you think, well, you might have enough water to comply with those plans. Now, when you look at the regional areas, a lot of the uh, power plant expansion is taking place in very dry areas. Mm -hmm. And then you see that there are potential future physical constraints in the availability of the resource, water, to, to satisfy the energy needs. Um, so if we don't plan accordingly, and if we don't uh, 
coordinate with the water sector how the, the infrastructure required to supply water to the energy sector is planned in a coordinated way, we run the risk of having a, a large portion of stranded assets, the assets that power plants that will not be able to run at the, at the level that they're supposed to run or that they are, will be forced to shut down at certain periods of the year because of low water availability, for example. And also we need to understand that in those basins, we will have competition for the resource. So it's water that is being used for energy may not be used for agriculture. Uh, and that context needs to under be understood very well. On the other side of the equation, energy requires a lot of, uh, water requires a lot of energy for the abstraction, the transport of water, the treatment of water, uh, and understanding also the, the, the cost implications of that additional energy in the water systems becomes critical. Mm. And do you think that we're seeing enough uh, innovative technology that's coming out? You are seeing much more, uh, of course, on the technology front, a lot of advances. Uh, there's also a lot of advances on management techniques, for example, in water and how you improve energy efficiency. And on, of course, on energy, on the whole technology arena and renewables and the, you know, bringing down the cost of renewables, etc. Now, what you see, for example, on the cooling processes on energy that requires water, uh, there is, there's basically two large type of processes. One is wet cooling that requires vast amount of water, and then there is dry cooling, which is basically cooled, uh, uh, cooling uh, done by air. The issue is that then you have trade-offs, because cooling uh, with air reduces efficiency of the power plant, increases the cost of, of, uh, of, uh, of performance, but also increases uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So that's when you start seeing the trade-offs between water and energy. So you may try and, and approach uh, your policy or, or promote the dry, dry cooling, which is one of the actually policies here in South Africa. Uh, but at the same time, your, your costs will increase of the investments and uh, running the systems and your greenhouse gases may increase. So these trade-offs, technology has a, a very important uh, role but so will, in the case of water for energy infrastructure, so bringing the infrastructure to the energy uh, side. And also there is an institutional context that is critical. The two sectors are managed separately. Uh, so we have policies in, in each sector that are not necessarily complementary. So we need to understand the policy, the regulatory framework, in order to be able to promote uh, more integrated uh, planning and investment. And with Africa looking um, at a sustainable future and 100% access to, to both water and energy, what can be done to promote the, the whole nexus, the food, water, energy nexus, um, both from a small scale up to utilities? How can, we, how can we change this mindset around it and get sectors to work uh, together opposed to, to working in silos? I think one. I think you mentioned one of the critical issues that um, at least we keep on repeating when we talk about this nexus thinking. You know, that is that is not only a, a new concept, but that we actually implement it, and that is it actually covers all the different levels. You know, from the very macro planning scale, all the way to the actual user. No? I, the, 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 the challenge is one of access, as you say. Mm. You have 2.4 billion people with unreliable access to electricity in the world. More than 90% are here in Sub-Saharan mm. Africa. You have 660 million people without access to water. 40% are also here in Sub-Saharan Africa. So at the end of the day, this is about providing access to the people that do not have it today. And I think it has different levels of interventions. And, one critical aspect is that we need to try and elevate the dialogue to one that is not a sector by sector dialogue. This should not be the energy sector's main objective or the water sector's main objective. I think it goes beyond that. It should be something that you establish a dialogue with the ministries of finance, of economics, planning ministries at the national level. This is something that you need to raise awareness on the potential efficiency gains across sectors, the, the, how do you maximize environmental and social benefits? How do you minimize costs? How do you improve efficiencies across sectors? 
uh, and across natural resources uh, in order to achieve this goal. So it's an issue of keep on elevating that dialogue to the highest possible uh, levels. And then lastly, I'd like to ask you, what advice would you like to impart with project planners and decision makers in both sectors within, within Africa who are looking to, um, to adopt a, a water efficient project? Yeah, I, I, crit, critical aspect here is the whole issue of um, trying to advocate for better dialogue. Uh, we, we keep on uh, promoting integrated s solutions and integrated uh, uh, arrangements and integrated uh, investments, but that is quite difficult to actually implement. You, know, you have institutional fragmentations in the way that we plan and we invest in the sectors. So uh, what, what you're seeing is also you, you have to come up with a mechanism where in a sense the bottom-up meets the top-down approach. So there's a national high-level scale messaging that comes from the politicians and the uh, ministries, but also at the utility level, which at the end of the day are the ones responsible for planning, building that infrastructure, maintaining the infrastructure in both sectors, there has to be some sort of incentives for them to start talking to each other more. It's not an issue of maybe forcing something or imposing a regulation or a policy, but it's also the understanding that when you plan investments, um, the, the, the planning of the investments into the future, you're looking at investments that are very costly. You are uh, you have a, a risk of locking in, you know, unsustainable paths of investments, and infrastructure that will be there for many, many decades, mm -hmm. in both sectors. So there's a there's a critical gain in trying to combine a, a lot of those investments and a lot of those plans to ensure that you build with the synergies that uh, you can have with uh, critical joint investments, uh, and also that you understand what are the potential trade-offs that you may face. That also includes understanding very well the, the social context and the, 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 the potential competing users for the resources that are in, in the other sectors. So understanding a bit, going a bit beyond what is your uh, normal functions or scope uh, becomes critical and, and we are seeing more and more that a lot of the discussions even here this morning on, on utilities that we're, we're discussing for example the issue on energy use for wastewater then all of a sudden they, 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 we were starting to discuss the, how important it is to understand wastewater in the context of a basin level and water quality and the health impacts of the of, the, of a poor water quality in a basin level not only under the utilities purview. Mm. And that is critical. And I think we are advancing in that sense, but it takes time. Mm. Well, Diego, well, thank you. Thank you thank very you. much for your time and joining us. And uh, I hope we see more dialogue and uh, more implementation. Certainly hope so. <laughs> Thanks for being here and uh, look forward to being here next year. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us. I am Ashley Turon, reporting from the African Utility Week studio.